The Mercury map for Battlefield 5 launches this week. It's finally happening. There will be much rejoicing come Thursday morning. But until then, we've got some more data mine goodness to consume from our friend Tempor Yal. And from the title, you can guess what we're going to be talking about mainly in this video. We're going to be talking about weapons. After the patch drop last week, the keen data miners out there noticed a bunch of new things that were added into the code for the game, this time mentions of Russian and Japanese weaponry, amongst other things, and considering we have absolutely no confirmation of Russian involvement in Battlefield 5 yet, the weapons being found in the files was certainly cool but it wasn't particularly surprising. DICE, as evidence with previous patches for the game, is known for front-loading things into the client well before their intended release day, and of course, Tides of War is taking us on a journey through World War II. You can't do a World War II game, really, without having the Russians in it. But just before we continue, this video today is sponsored by Elgato. Whether you're looking to step up your streaming game or just start sharing your awesome gaming moments, Elgato has got you covered. I use their Stream Deck every single day for editing shortcuts, and I've always got a HD60S capture card in my travel bag for different events. Check out the link in the description for more details. Okay then, the first weapon that was found in the files is the LAD light machine gun, an experimental Soviet light machine gun that was intended to offer the firepower of a medium machine gun in a smaller light machine gun format. Now the gun was never accepted into service by the Soviets, and only two prototypes were ever built. It featured a 600 round rate of fire, it was chambered to accept the Tokarev pistol cartridge, and it was fitted with an integrated bipod for more accurate, sustained fire. Now to me, I don't know what this looks like to you, but to me this looks somewhat like the FG42 in the way that it's designed, and it might well be offered as an alternative to that weapon if and when it arrives in Battlefield 5. With the new theatre of war all but confirmed to be the Pacific, I think this weapon isn't likely to see the light of day until maybe 2020, likely coming as part of another theatre of war addition to the game that will introduce the Soviet Union. Next up, we have a Swiss weapon to talk about. This is the K31 bolt-action carbine. The variant mentioned in the files is the K31-43. That's a sniper variant of the weapon which comes with an integrated telescopic scope. Now, this weapon was designed in 1931 and was the standard issue rifle of the Swiss forces from 1933 to 1958. It featured a six-round removable magazine, and from 1944, a rifle launcher attachment was issued with this weapon. Muzzle velocity sat at around 780 meters a second, which is pretty fast, and so it'd be a great weapon to slot directly into Battlefield 5's recon class. However, with it being a bolt-action carbine, there's a potential here that this weapon could be added to the Medic class, which now holds on to that weapon category alongside SMGs. There's also that mention of a grenade launcher attachment, and that has me again leaning towards a Medic placement. It would pit it in a very similar position to the M26 Tromboncino that was added to the game recently through the Tides of War. Next up, we have the MAB-38, and this is an Italian weapon, it's a submachine gun, that was used by the Axis powers during World War II, and it's now been confirmed as a Tides of War weapon unlock for the final week of Chapter 3 Trial by Fire. The recent data mine, however, uncovered stats for the weapon, which we previously didn't have access to. So it's going to use the same 9x19mm Parabellum round as the MP40 and the Suomi SMG. Rate of fire sits around 600 rounds per minute. Muzzle velocity, that's going to start at just 345 meters per second as a stock weapon, which is quite slow. But it can be increased to 560 with a specialization. Magazine capacity is just 20 rounds standard, but it can be increased to 30 again with a specialization. And reload times come in at 2.4 seconds for a tactical reload and 3.4 seconds for a full reload. 
The unlock for this weapon is going to center around the brand new Outpost game mode, which is launching a week after the new map drop, so that's next week now. This weapon is likely going to be part of the theme for Chapter 4. I think that's going to include more Italian influence in Southern Europe during the war. Next on the list, we have a Japanese gadget in the files. This is the Lunge Mine. It was used by the Japanese heavily during the Pacific Conflict against American armor, and interestingly, it was a suicidal weapon. The mine was a hollow charge placed inside a metal container, and then that was attached to the end of a wooden stick. Soldiers would then need to pull out the security pin and then charge with the stick and lunge at the armor. So let's say an American tank, connect the mine to the hull of the tank, and then it would explode on impact. Now this would kill the soldier charging and likely do at least significant damage to the target as well. At a 90 degree angle on impact, the lunge mine could penetrate about 150 millimeters of armor. So this thing was quite powerful. Trying to place something like this into Battlefield 5 in terms of balancing is quite tough because I'm not sure DICE would want to balance this as a single-use suicidal item. That might not be the best gameplay experience. And I'm a firm believer of making sure the game is fun first and foremost and then historical accuracy and everything else can come after. Instead, perhaps, it could do significant damage to the person charging with it, and if the target of the mine was also of low health, it would be able to destroy that target. I'm not 100% sure right now, but it is an interesting thing to try and think about. The flamethrower pistol is also mentioned in the files. This appears to have been reactivated with the most recent patch, and it's directly linked into the 5v5 game mode, and it may well be a primary weapon that you can use there. There are lots of references to the 5v5 mode in the file still, but I do hope DICE isn't planning to section off all of those items solely for the 5v5 mode. That to me would be a really bad move, and I think it would upset a lot of the core community who aren't entirely bothered about a 5v5 mode, and they're looking for content in the main portion of Battlefield 5's multiplayer. And now we've got some more detailed statistics on the Carabin 1938M. This is a weapon we've spoken about before, and interestingly, it was in the Mercury trailer that was released the other day. This is a Polish weapon that was used heavily during the invasion of Poland in 1939, and in Battlefield 5, it appears to be an assault semi-automatic weapon. Since we now have more detailed stats for the weapon, it's safe to assume that this weapon will make an appearance at some point in the game's near future, and it's also been in the trailer, so we can assume it's going to come out soon. It will probably be a Tides of War unlock in Chapter 4. So firstly, this gun is going to use the same ammunition type as the Gewehr 43, and rate of fire sits at 300 rounds per minute. Muzzle velocity is spec to 760 meters per second stock, and that can be increased to 860 with the right specialization. That's pretty fast. And the magazine capacity is 10. That can't be upgraded. And lastly, we've got stats on the Walther PPK pistol. This is James Bond's signature handgun. Rate of fire will be 499 rounds per minute, or 500 if you want to round it up, and bullet velocity will be 250 meters per second. Magazine capacity will be 8, and reload times will sit at 1.66 seconds for a tactical reload, and 2.2 seconds for a full reload. Now, stepping away from weapons for just a little bit, we're going to talk about a few other things that have been uncovered in this data mine. First of all, two new factions have been added to the game code, and currently they're hidden from view. We've got the US Pacific and Japan. Both of these factions will be added alongside the current two in the Your Company menu, and it seems that the current Axis and Allies factions, they're going to get a rename. We're going to Allies UK and Axis Germany. So not only does this now represent a clear intent for the new theatre of war to be the Pacific theatre, introducing the Americans and the Japanese, but it also leaves the door open for more American factions to be added, since this set is denoted as Pacific. And the second thing that's been uncovered, it appears that the Firestorm game mode is going to get a respawn function. 
This is going to work in the squads and the duos version of the mode, obviously, because in solos, if you die, then you're out of the round. And it's planning to be linked to the public events within the map. Those are the capture points that reward you with different types of loot. The idea is that players will get a message on their screen that says a respawn point is available. And once you capture that point, any dead players within the squad or the duo will be spawned back onto the map. Right now, there's no indication if or when we might get this feature added to Battlefield 5, but it is yet another feature being added to a game mode that certainly isn't as popular as it was at launch. And I'm going to say for what feels like the 500th time, DICE, why don't you make Firestorm free to play and let people just play the game mode? It's an awesome game mode, but keeping it behind a paywall is certainly killing it off at the moment. So that's everything uncovered in the latest data mine from Battlefield 5, and I'm sure this won't be the last video that I make on a data mine. A big thanks, as always, to Temple Yao for his efforts in uncovering this stuff, and I've linked his profile down below in the description, so you can go and check out some more of his work if you want to. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video, and subscribe if you loved it and you want to see more, and a big thank you for watching today. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.